It's the first week of February 2012 and I thought I'd share what I'm up to for this season. Um, I'm going a little bit further than um, my own back garden this year and I've got uh, people interested in me uh, checking out uh, what native bees are on their farms. So what I'm just going to show you here rapidly is uh, my preparations. So basically um, I'll show you over to here we've got four farms so I've got four setups um, not only the the uh, reeds that I'm going to put in place so I'm going to have four uh, four different bunches of reeds um, but I'm also going to um, set these tray systems um, in place which I made up myself this year so we've got um, six millimeter trays we got uh, these are eight nine millimeter We've got some 12 millimeter, altogether seven trays per system, <clears throat> and uh, with these we're going to hedge our bets by having uh, both the wood and the the reed system to to see if the bees uh, want to come in and nest here. And uh, the basic uh, object of this test is to look at the biodiversity that's in place. And not to import any bees into the farms and uh, hopefully we'll go with the um, <clears throat> we'll go with the local population of bees and we'll increase that population uh, and as yet we don't know what species uh, are present so so we're just going to give them every chance of, of nesting so I've got uh, my trusty old uh, umbrella for reeds here we've got uh, what, what I call what we have uh, called hogweed here we've got Dipsicus teasel, which is a, like um, a thistle, which the bumblebees love. And again, that's a pretty solid one. It's, there's not so much of it, uh, but it's a bit spiky as well. Got uh, what's become my trusty Japanese knotweed, which I'm very careful not to take any roots from it or any seeds when I when I trim up the uh, the nodes. Oh, and on this on the Japanese knotweed this year, we're going for. Um, longer tubes so what I've done is I've uh, cut uh, in into two nodes and somewhere down there you'll see that I've managed to knock out the middle chamber so we're going for longer reeds to see if the, the bees like that and of course the the fourth reed is the some sort of marsh reed that um, that's locally around on the on the local tips and, and ponds and stuff so that's for the much smaller bees, so we're look, looking at uh, from two till to about five millimeter um, internal diameter. So I'm using these four reeds, and those are going to be the uh, hopefully the basis of the new homes for the bees. And uh, I think that's about it, really. So I'm going to be placing these these reeds with uh, these four farms. Oh yeah, and the, the fruits uh, in the farms are. Um, many apricot and some apple um, but we've got some kiwi fruit vines that we're going to try and uh, help pollinate but uh, it's going to require a lot of a lot of bees to, to saturate the pollination um, um, zones because uh, apparently kiwis aren't very friendly to bees or they don't have the sort of the attractiveness to bees uh, so I've heard so we're going to see we're going to test for those and so, but it's going to be mainly apricot farms uh, down the south so uh, well, let's hope it all works out, and I'll, I'll post a, I'll post a video of when we get down there and, and put, putting our setup in place.